Sauron is obviously such an iconic figure in Tolkien lore. This season, we're going to get to see Sauron out in the open, making everything happen. Who is this man? He is no man. He is Sauron. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. I am joined by two actors whose characters couldn't be more opposite. Welcome Benjamin Walker, who plays High King Gilgalad, and Charlie Vickers, AKA Sauron. Thank you. Benjamin, how did it feel to put these elf ears back on? It feels like coming home. <laughs> I know that sounds goony, but we are such a nice group of people and we've known each other so long that bringing the band back together is a, a breath of fresh air. Here we are back in Lindon, and one of the great things about a new season is having new characters and brilliant actors to portray them, like this one. <laughs> Mr. Ben Daniels. Hello. A lot happens in the first season, but the second season, it really feels like the gloves come off, and if you know the source material, you know we got a lot of ground to cover. Charlie, what was it like for you stepping back into Halbrand's shoes now that your true identity is out there? It's a pretty special feeling. I mean, for me, it's quite different because I'm sort of coming back as almost a different character. Yeah, there's that sequence that spans many years, showing Sauron recovering from Adar's betrayal, rebuilding his physical form, and finally intersecting with Galadriel in the flashback to season one. What did you think about that being like the opening? When they first pitched me the idea, I think they called it a blob. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not really no, a blob, it's, so it's, it's more like a collection of, more of worms. To have that whole prologue bit tell the backstory of Sauron was really special to see. But it's also like the characteristics of it are kind of beautiful, dark, sinister, mm. and vicious. Did you have a movement coach when you were the Mormon blob? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it took me many, you know, many, many weeks training <laughs> that. <laughs> the thing that I always was trying to do was just to try to play every moment genuine with Halbrand and everything else was kind of there in the writing. Because if you're kind of winking at the camera or like twirling your moustache, you start to think, oh, there's something going on here. But it's, I like that on second rewatch, you can see that there's layers to it. You pushed me to heights that no one else could have. I will never forget that. And I'll see to it that no one else does either. Sauron left Galadriel behind, but she was really his partner in a lot of ways. I mean, even in my mind, I'm like, oh, there was a genuine connection between you and Galadriel, but it was there? It's yeah. always mind games with you. I think any person that he works with is all for his own benefit. So he worked with Galadriel because I think he thought that she could give him something. She could provide him a lightness mm -hmm. to his darkness. You know, we joke about his most basic form of the blobbiness. Yeah. But he's parasitic in that, like, anything that comes by, if he can use it, he's going to take it. Elrond just informed me your companion, this Halbrand, was not who he claimed. Yet you chose to withhold this from him and Calabrimbor. Who is this man? He is Sauron. Gilgalad handles Galadriel's revelation that Halbrand is Sauron in a really awesome way. It's kind of like this throat noise. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I've been asked this is, before. It, it, I'm actually saying an elvish word. I, I want people to start using it. Like, I, use it make... yeah, I use it and I'm like, it? ah, grach, grach. How do you yeah. think that revelation changes your character's dynamic with Galadriel? I mean, they just keep messing up. You can only tell people what they should do so many times. Well, Elrond takes the ring and oh, then does gosh, that cliff. Okay, what a tantrum. No, grach. Grach. <laughs> <laughs> What's great is that everyone has a point of view and it's justified. There's nobody who's really in the wrong, it's just a very complicated situation. When it's first created, you don't actually know what it is. It's mm -hmm. like Oppenheimer, you've created something that you don't fully understand. And so it is that complicated yeah. and dangerous. And that's why he's so cranky all the time. Cranky, but <laughs> brooding, brooding, Gilgadaddy. Broody, <laughs> Gilgadaddy. Gil oh, <laughs> Did you look that up on the internet? No. Um, what does but it, mean? it was sent to me. We don't have to talk about what you know, it means. You might we, not. I'd rather not. <laughs> the light of the Eldar has faded. Coals too long removed from the hearth. You had a song in this episode. You were actually quite amazing. Are oh, you thanks. a trained singer? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a song and dance man. When I saw that our High King was going to sing in Elvish to mark the moment 
where his people are leaving Middle Earth. I'm not sure if there's a more Tolkienian thing to do at that moment. The song is a funeral dirge, and it's that kind of a song about the passing of time and loss. At this point, we're kind of accepting doom. We have to leave and return to Valinor and abandon Middle-earth to its own devices. It's unique because it's an Elvish, that's a first for me, but Bear wrote the music and Leith McPherson's our voice and speech genius. So, I mean, I felt really supported. When the set design is so vast, how immersive does a scene like that feel for you? Is it amazing. easier or harder to act? I, I think it's easy. I think that's the beauty of working on something like this because there's so many hours of craftsmanship and so much dedication put in from the crew. You get to walk onto these sets that just do half the job for you. This one turned itself in, Lord Father. Can you talk about some of those scenes at the camp? One of them comes to mind uh, when Sauron has his face in the dirt. I remember it really well. We were in a tiny little set where you could hardly stand up. And I had a, the chain around my neck was like a proper chain. That moment when I lie down, I remember we did a few variations of it with Charlotte because I say, I vow to serve the Lord of Mordor. In that moment, Adar thinks, oh, sweet, yeah, he's wearing allegiance to me, but I'm like, no. Not it's so. actually a bit of an oversight from Adar, really. Yeah. yeah. He took his eye off the ball. But there is something in that what's scene, to it. Yeah, where I think that, and Sam and I spent a long time talking about it, where there's almost an acknowledgement that Adar knows that Halbrand is Sauron. Because in the opening scene, you see their relationship, and there's, there's almost this kind of supernatural connection between them that they must understand each other on another level. You can't kill me. In time, you will beg me to. Ah! Do you feel bad that you got everybody to crush on you as Halbrand, and now you've revealed yourself to be absolutely the worst? <laughs> Do you feel guilty at all? Yeah, but there's still I think something that's a good exciting. lesson to learn. Be careful. Don't get sucked in by pretty faces. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, both of you, for thank joining you us. Thank Can't wait to see time. where your characters go on through season two. Thank yeah, you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thanks, guys. That's it for this episode. Seven more epic episodes of The Rings of Power to go. And here on Inside the Rings of Power, more inside information and special guests. I can't wait. Join us again after you watch the next episode of The Rings of Power on Prime Video. This is only the beginning.